So this week we're going to learn t-test. So t-test is a test that we have a hypothesis to compare the sample. Okay, we want to compare the differences between sample or differences for a sample with the population parameter. So there is two type of test. One is a one sample test. So it's very similar to the uh, one sample z test that we discussed in the previous lecture. Another one is two sample test. So after this lecture and completing a few tutorial, you should be able to differentiate different type of statistical tests that use to test the difference for one and two samples. Select the correct statistic test for one sample test and two sample test. Perform statistical tests for hypothesis of one sample and two sample differences. So there are three topics in this lecture. First is the t-test. Second one is two sample t-test but for independent sample. And the third one is two sample t-test for pair samples. So first for the one sample t-test. The objective of the one sample t-test is same as the one sample z-test. Okay. So the differences between these two tests we have been discussed in the previous lecture in the z-test lectures. So the differences in between the z-test and t-test is in terms of the research questions and the distribution curve that we use. Okay, for the z-test, we use the standard normal curve. For t-test, we use the student t distribution table. And also, a slightly different in the hypothesis procedure. Okay, remember the six steps that we have in the procedure that we explained in the previous lectures. So they're slightly different. So first is the research questions. So the question is to test whether okay, the population which we took a sample and the population mean is equal to a certain value that we want to investigate. Okay. So for Z test, we will use for the population where we know the parameter, especially the standard deviation and also large sample size. For T test, we will use it when we don't know the population parameter. What we can calculate from our sample is the standard deviation of our sample. So we can use the t-test to test this kind of the hypothesis, whether the population mean is equal to the certain value. So second is the distribution. So as you can see for the z-test, we will calculate the z-score and then we compare to the standard normal table, which we can get the probability for a given z-value. For t-test, we will calculate the t-score. And for the t-score, we have to refer to another table because we based on the different distribution. So this is to describe, to explain a bit what is the difference between the t and z distribution. So what you see here is a normal distribution. So it's a standard normal curve. Okay. So this, by now you should be quite familiar with this curve. And we also know for this curve, the area under curve. Okay, let's say this is the probability. Okay. However, for the T distribution, so what you see here is a T distribution. So the dot line. Okay, it's slightly different from the Z distribution. So that means that the probability under curve is also different. Okay, given a T value. So the value at the center is still zero, okay, regardless is T distribution or Z distribution. And both sides, each of the both sides, left and right hand side, you have the positive infinity and also for negative infinity, okay, negative value. So if this is a Z table, then this will be the Z value. If this is a T table, then this will be a T value. So the curve is different, okay. So the probability given a, for a Z value equal to 1.96, the probability is different from the t value 1.96 because the area under curve is different. So the dot line show you the t distribution for degree of freedom 3. Okay, so this is how it look like. So for 95%, the t value is not same as the z value. 
as you can see here. Okay, so this is a key value. The shape of the distribution is depend on the degree of freedom. So just now the example that I show you only show you one curve, but actually for the T distribution, the shape of the curve is depend on the degree of freedom. It's unlike the Z distribution, you only have one standard normal curve. For T distribution, you have a number of the curve, depend on the degree of freedom. So which curve you're going to refer to is depend on your sample size, which we can calculate the degree of freedom from the sample size. So here I show you a few examples. So we have the standard normal curve, so the blue color which is overlaid with the dot line. So as you can see, for the T distribution, if the degree of freedom is 30, so its N is at least 30, the distribution is very similar to the Z distribution. Okay, So that's the reason why if you have a sample size more than 30, you can use the Z distribution. Okay. And if you use the T distribution to do the calculation or to get a probability for your T value, the value will be same as the Z value. Okay, so this is for the degree of freedom 30, as you can see here. Move to the next one. So as you can see, for different degree of freedom, the shape of the curve is different. The probability under curve also different. So that means that if you have T is equal to one, is somewhere here. So let's say this is a T is equal to 1. For degree of freedom 1, the probability is here. Okay. However, for degree of freedom 3, okay, given a value 1 of t, the probability is somewhere here. Okay, so you can see it's different. So what is the degree of freedom? So I will not explain in detail what is the degree of freedom, and you don't have to know the concept. In detail but I will put some resources in the additional material which you can watch if you want if you don't know what is the review of freedom it's still okay at this point of time so what you have to remember is that you know that the degree of freedom is the n minus 1 and the n is your sample size so it's a number of observation in your sample so if you have a sample of 10 so 10 observation. So let's say 10 students where you take a measurement from. Okay, your n is equal to 10. So your v will equal to 10 minus 1. So 10 minus 1 and you get 9. In state state, the number of degree of freedom is a number of a value in final calculation of a state state that are free to vary. This is what you need to remember. So for z distribution, we only have one standard normal curve. And we know that it's very difficult to calculate the area under curve. That's the reason why we have a standard normal table, which we can use as a reference. As long as we want to have a Z value, given a Z value, let's say 0 0.44, okay, then we can obtain the probability. Okay, so this is a quick reference. So for a Z table, it's for a single normal curve. How about the T table? We've seen in the previous lecture, for different degree of freedom, we will have different curve. Uh, the shape is different, so the probability will be different. So that means that for each degree of freedom, we will have a reference. So you can imagine this degree of freedom can have a very large num value. Okay, can be ranged from one until infinity actually. Okay, the sample size can be one hundred, no problem, or one thousand. So that's the reason why we will not find in a statistical book, in the appendix of the statistical book, that give you the table for each of these curves. Okay. Rather than we we'll summarize the critical value okay, that we need from all the tables. So I will show you how the table looks like in the next slide. So this is how it looks like for the T table. So it's really different from the Z table. Actually, it's a lot of difference. So what you have here, okay, which is different from the Z table is you will have the T value in the center. So this is a T value. And this is not probability. So remember the first step 
is to construct your pair of hypotheses. The next one is to determine your critical value. After that, you have to decide whether your test is a one-tail test or two-tail test. Okay, so you have to mention explicitly in your calculations. For the t-test, you also need to mention the degree of freedom, which t curve that we refer to. Okay, so that's the reason why on the table there will be additional column on the right hand side, which is the degree of freedom. So this one is a degree of freedom. So where is the probability? Because in the z distribution, you have the z value on the side and at the top, then you have the probability in the center. Now, this t table already summarizes important value in each of these t distribution based on the different degree of freedom in a single table, just one table. So the p value or the probability is at the top. Okay, and here you can see you also have the one side and two side. So this is referred to the one tail or two tail test that you're going to use. So as you can see it's very different from the z table. So I just enlarge this part okay, to explain in more detail. So if your hypothesis okay, for one sample test is the mean is equal to 165 cm. Okay. And the alternative is the mean is not equal to 165 cm. So if you make a distribution curve. Okay. Whether the sample is four in either side, then we consider as different. So this is two tail test. Okay. Then the next thing is we need to determine the alpha. So the alpha is, so this is two tail test. Okay. And then alpha that we want to set, the criteria we want to set is 0 0.05, let's say. Okay. So on the other hand, that means it's 95%. Let's say our sample size is 6. Our de then the degree of freedom will be 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. Okay. So we have all the value that we need. So we have our degree of freedom. Okay, it's here, the green color. We have the tail, whether one tail or two tail that we have decided. The significant level is 95%, which is here. Okay. So what we need is to get the critical t. So what is the t value here? Okay. So we can use this table. So by using this example, we know that okay, this is a two-tail test. So we will refer to this two-side percentage. Then after that, our degree of freedom is five. Then we will refer to the degree of freedom row. So it's five. And the uh, Significant level is 0 0.05, which is translate into 95%. So it's 95 for two sides. So, okay, it's here. Okay, it's two sides, 95. Okay, it's not one side. Then we can look for the t value. So we just move down. Okay, and then get our t value. So this is our critical t value. So this shows you the absolute value. And we know that just now we know this is a two tail test. So that means that for each for once for the positive side, the critical t is 2.571. And then the negative side, the t is negative 2.571. Okay, so this is how you, how you calculate it. So if your no hypothesis is the mean is larger or smaller than 165 cm, the alternative hypothesis is the mean is smaller than 165 cm. Okay, so that means that our test is the one tail test, correct? So we we'll reject the no hypothesis if the given the calculated t is smaller than the critical value. Okay, so it's one side. And similarly, we need to determine the v. So just now our example, the V is equal to 5 because the N is equal to 6. So V is 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. And the alpha that we determine, let's say this case is 0 0.05 still. 
and it's a one tail test. So you have all the information that you need. So we just go to the degree of freedom five, one side. So alpha is 0 0.05, then it's 95 percent. So side one 95 here, and we go for the t value. So this is a critical t because this is on the other side, and the t table only give you the absolute value. In this case, this is negative 2.015. For the other hypothesis, which is the mean smaller and equal to, also the same concept, but the, the probability is on the other side of the curve. So you have the degree of freedom, probability, the alpha level is a one side or two side for the p-value, and then you can find your critical t. So what you see here is the critical value for the selected alpha for the degree of freedom 1 curve. Distribution is degree of freedom 3, like this one. Then you get a different t value. So rather than show you all the probability, they will give you the list, okay, shortlisted a most commonly used alpha label, the significant label. So if your significant label is 0 0.05, then the value that you need to refer to is 95%. If the I of alpha that you set is 0 0.01, then it's 99%. If the alpha that you set is 0 0.01, then you need to refer to the 99.9%. Just now we spent a lot of time to explain the T distribution. So the next thing is a hypothesis testing procedure. So as the table is different, we will not be obtain the exact p value from the table, the t table. Okay, instead we will compare the our calculated t value with the critical t value that we obtain from the table. So this is what we learned in the previous lectures. Okay, for the z test, because in the z test we can compare the p value directly because you can get the exact p value from the z test score. But for t test, we cannot do that. So that's the reason why for the t test and other statistical tests after this, you only have five steps. One, three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So first is the still the same to formulate the hypothesis, a pair of hypothesis. Set the criteria. So to set the criteria, we're not going to only set the p value, but we're going to set the critical statistical value for t. So we will have an alpha is equal to 0 0.05. And then if you do the t-test, then you can need, need to get the t-critical, okay, from the table. What is the value? After that, we're going to perform a statistical test. In this case, it's the t-test. We count the calculation, we get the t-score. So we have to compare the t-value that we calculated with the critical value in the next step. So you can imagine, so this is the curve, the T distribution, I will encourage you to draw a curve for every test, statistical mm -hmm. test that you perform at the beginning stage of your analysis. Okay. After you determine your alpha, your T critical, and also the tail, one tail or two tail, you can draw a curve. So in this case, what we want in the step number two is the best on this alpha, degree of freedom, and also whether one tail or two tail test. You can refer to the table and then get the critical t. Okay, let's say this is a critical t. Okay, so this is a critical value. And after that, we perform the statistical test based on our samples. And then we will obtain the t score. We get a calculated t. So after we have the calculated t or the test score, we can see whether the test score is for outside of the critical value in the critical region or inside of the critical value. Okay, so whether this test score is larger or smaller than the T critical. So if the test score, this one, okay, they calculated is larger or equal to the critical value, this one, okay, so that means that they, they fall outside of the criteria that we set. 
and it's fall into the rejection region. Then we will reject the no hypothesis. If the calculator test score is smaller than the critical value, okay, it's here, then we will not reject the no hypothesis. 